This is a picture of my grandparents. They were my inspiration. They were survivors of the Holocaust, where they literally lost everything. Their spouses and their whole families were murdered. But amazingly, despite the horrors of their past, they always kept a very positive outlook on life. They were never resentful. They worked hard, tried to enjoy every day, and they were great grandparents for me and my brother Michel. I could not imagine myself enduring a single day in the camp, so I remember as a kid asking my grandfather, how did you survive five years of war? And he said, well, we just wanted to live. We didn't know it was going to take that long, but we just tried to last one day at a time. My grandparents both passed away in the same year, in 2002, and this team picture was also made in 2002, and it was the year that I lost everything. Yeah, it was the year I lost everything, not only my grandparents, but I became paralyzed, and undergoing spinal cord injury is without a doubt the most drastic change I ever had to deal with. I had, a I had a lot of grief and sadness, mostly in the beginning, but it also showed me a side of me I never expected. I got to experience the most impressive survival skill in human nature, the ability of body and mind to adapt to new circumstances. And that is the story I would like to share with you this morning. I was 25. I loved sports. I was a goalkeeper. I had worked my way up from the 12th team to the first team of my club. I had great reflexes, making spectacular saves was what made me tick. And then one day, on the soccer pitch, I felt a strange feeling in my left leg, and I felt a pain in my back. And a little later, I discovered I had a tumor in my spinal cord that was pressing against my nerves, and it had to be removed. So a few days before Christmas 2002, I went to the hospital and I was operated. Well, the tumor was successfully removed, but unfortunately, fortunately, after one of the operations, a bleeding occurred, which left me paralyzed from my chest down. I couldn't feel or move anything. And the doctor explained to me that modern science doesn't understand a lot about the recovery of nerves, and, well, in some instances, people would regain movement or feeling, but it could take up to two years before I would know which functions would recover and which wouldn't. Well, I decided, as long as the doctor wasn't sure, that I, that I would just assume that I would recover completely. Then, for four months, there was no improvement whatsoever. I meditated a lot, and one day I was lying in bed, and I could move one toe. And then slowly I started improving. I could move my leg a little, a little later, I could stand up and even take a few steps. Training for me became a full-time job. I would go to the rehab center every day and train the whole day. And I did that for four years. I worked hard as if my life depended on it. And in a certain way, it did, because I was convinced that my life would only be worth living if I would walk again and play football. I had to relearn everything, not only walking, but also taking care of myself, getting dressed, going to the bathroom, driving my car. I had a lot to deal with, but I did, as my grandma, uh, grandfather had taught me. I took it one day at a time. On good days, I could walk for 20 meters, and then suddenly my legs would stop, and the trainer had to rush with uh, my wheelchair so I could sit back down again. And as the years went by, improvement in walking came slower and slower. But my wheelchair skills, they became better and better. Walking was so tough for me that I actually was glad when I sat back down in my wheelchair. And the same distance that just took 10 minutes for me to walk, I could ride back in my wheelchair in 10 seconds. 
the more I used my wheelchair, I noticed that my body was transforming. My chest, my shoulders, my arms, they would grow before, because they became my power of moving me around. And moving around in my wheelchair became a completely unconscious process. I didn't have to think about it. I analyzed my situation. I had my accessible home. I was independent. I could take care of myself. I was working. Sometimes I was dating. I had my manual car that I could drive around in. Actually, I had my life back. The only thing that was holding me back was that I used so much of my time to train to walk again. After four years, it was time for me to accept that I would never walk normal again. And doing that came as a relief to me. I felt free, I felt independent. And instead of playing football, I started playing wheelchair basketball, which became my new passion. Something interesting happened. I was celebrated as some kind of a hero. People told me that they respected me for how I well I could cope with my situation. They thought I was brave how I had accepted my faith and I was congratulated on the fact that I could take care of myself and I had such good wheelchair skills. And it's always great to get compliments and they are without a doubt well intended, but I don't feel I'm exceptional. It would be special indeed if I would be the only person in the whole world that would be capable of living well despite having a disability. But the interesting thing is, I constantly meet people that do exactly the same. I realize that most people in their day-to-day -day job probably don't get to meet a lot of people with a disability, but I meet them all the time. At Papendal, where we train with the Dutch wheelchair basketball team and the Paralympic team, in my rehabilitation center close by here in Amsterdam, in the special needs schools I sometimes visit, they are all filled with strong, optimistic people that deal with their disability, both physically and mentally. And most of the time, they just enjoy life. Since there are so many people worldwide that are capable of adapting to big changes like getting a disability, I believe that this is not an exceptional power for just a few exceptional people. I think it's something most of us have. It only shows up in exceptional situations. It is the power of survival. I believe that there are three key ingredients that decide if a person can successfully pull through big, challenging changes. First, you need at least a little spark of optimism. You have to believe in a positive outcome. You have to trust that one way or another you'll end up fine, even if the pursuit of your initial goal will bring you to a different destination. Second ingredient, time and effort. You have to put in energy, otherwise nothing will happen. And then last, but not least, number three, the support of others. I would not have recovered if it wasn't for the help of my friends and family that took care of me when I couldn't do it myself. I'm thankful to them and also to my team of trainers, physiotherapists and doctors. With these three factors, optimism, time and effort, and the support of others, I am convinced that every person has a huge capacity to adapt to extreme circumstances. You only discover how much of it you have when such a situation demands it from you. And change will come to you, because change is an inherent part of life, and so is adversity. But what if? Instead of waiting for this life-threatening, exceptional situation to occur to you, you would use your power of adaptation when you're still safe and healthy. Not to survive this external threat, but to achieve an exceptional goal that you set yourself. We know it is possible because we lap it up in our millions watching such TV programs as Dancing with the Stars and Strictly Come Dancing where we see celebrities, they start out as beginners, and then in just a few months' time, they are dancing like professionals. They use these same three ingredients. They have optimism, otherwise they wouldn't have signed up. They put in time and effort, their agendas are punishing, nothing but training all day, every day. And three, they have the support. It's always high-skilled professionals teaching them with them all the time. I have one last picture that I want to show to you. 
It is uh, made two years before my grandfather passed away. I was still walking and he was in a wheelchair because the last five years of Opa Sam's life, uh, he couldn't walk anymore. And he's smiling in this picture, but uh, most of the time he found it very difficult that he couldn't walk anymore. And maybe if he would be around today, he might ask me, Mark, how do you survive being in a wheelchair for the rest of your life? And I would say, Opa Sam, <laughs> I'm doing great. I choose my own challenges. I have fun achieving my own exceptional goals using my power of adaptation. And of course, there are still difficult, difficult moments, but I will deal with them one day at a time.